It's comeback time on MasterChef. We're looking for a great amateur cook who can make it as a professional. Someone who can turn out exceptional food. It's great to be given another chance. If I was to go through today, I'd be ecstatic. This is one tough competition. I'm back for revenge. Whoever wins, it'll change their life. Cooking doesn't get tougher than this. Last series, these three contestants didn't quite make the grade. But now they're back for one more go at the MasterChef title. Winning MasterChef is really important to me. Um, at the moment, I can't think of anything I want more. I know it's going to be a lot harder this time round. And uh, I am looking forward to the challenge. I think I'm a better cook than I was last time. And I believe the proof is in the pudding. And uh, I want a chance to cook the pudding. In this one-hour episode, they'll compete for the last remaining quarter-final place. The winner will then be up against the other exceptional heat winners. Rachel. Andy. Simon. They face two tough challenges. They have to impress the judges with their best two-course meal. Never tasted anything like that before in my life, and I would eat the whole lot, no worries at all. But first, the endurance test. They have to prove they have the stamina and skill to make it as a professional chef by cooking in service for 18 hours. No. What happened? Do it again. Oh, come on, come on, come on, come on. That one's okay. That one. Today is definitely about stamina. It is about endurance and it is about skill. This is their second chance and this is their last chance. They either make it now or they're out for good. It's 5:30 a.m. and the contestants begin their 18-hour shift. Last time, it was Yola's perfect chocolate fondant that got her through to the quarter-final. It's early in the competition for me to want to kiss someone, Yola. <laughs> but that pretty much flicks every single one of my switches. But she struggled in the ingredients recognition test. Black mustard seed. Cumin seed. Cumin seed. You're leaving us, I'm afraid. I think, well, I know. I was knocked out at the wrong stage last time, so I'm back for another go. Father of two, Sean, impressed with his big, bold flavours. There's lots of things going on in your mouth. You're thinking about food. But was guilty of putting too many food combinations onto one plate. This dish, like yourself, has diverse cultural background, doesn't it? This time, my recipes are a little bit more traditional, so hopefully um, I've got what they're looking for. New mum Michelle proved to be a gifted cook of her native Indian food. I love it. But she slipped up when she strayed from her roots. It doesn't light bonfires. Being a new mum has completely changed the way I look at food. From a point of view of, oh, I am going to be feeding this to my child, is this good enough? For the first part of their endurance test, all three contestants will have to cope with a breakfast service at the exclusive Galvin at Windows restaurant at the top of London's Park Lane Hilton Hotel. As a chef, I still find breakfast service very, very exciting. I love the adrenaline, I love the buzz, because it's the fastest service of a kitchen. Let's see who's really got it. And with 150 people booked in, head chef Andre is eager to get started. It's extremely busy, so we're going to have a lot of pressure on today. Right, let's get going. It's just turned 7 a.m. and the first customers arrive, expecting the best breakfast served promptly. OK, first order in, uh, one ham and cheese omelette, followed by one English breakfast and a smoked salmon and scrambled egg. Yes, Chef. So we got a first test straight away. You're all working together. Yes, and thank you, And you've just got to be confident that you're up on the pass at the right time. Yola gets straight to work. She's in charge of the omelettes, all individually made to order. It's my first order. I feel all right at the moment. I'm just trying not to get any colour on this omelette. OK, that's good. 
that's nice. We've got lovely colour. Okay. You've got a nice shape. Not bad at all. On the other side of the kitchen, Michelle is cooking eggs benedict and smoked salmon with scrambled eggs. I am extremely, extremely stressed and I'm hoping I can get it all done and dusted and sorted, but it's not that easy. You're doing benedict, aren't you? So you need toasted muffins. Oh. Michelle seems very, very nervous. Um, a little bit unsure of herself in a way. But the pressure gets to her and she forgets to add one vital ingredient. You finished with cream? Uh, oh, I'm going to send it this time because we got a little bit of time pressure and she needs to get it right next time. Chef has really high standards, so there's no room for slip-ups. Over at the grill, Sean is preparing a traditional English breakfast. How long for that full English? Four minutes, yeah. And it's vital that each element is cooked to perfection. It's quite intimidating and scary, to be honest, because there's a lot of things I've got to get right at the same time. Sean's first dishes go out, but there's been a complaint. Chef, the uh, tomatoes on the table kitchen were not uh, good enough. Can you wash that, please? Okay, well, thanks. Thank you. Okay, we've got to wash our tomatoes to make sure we're cooked enough. Yeah? Yeah, they weren't cooked enough. Yes, sir. It's 8 a.m., the restaurant is packed out, the orders are flooding in, and Yola continues to grow in confidence, turning out omelette... Very good. Thank you. Okay, ..after perfect omelette. OK, we've got another check on. We've got one ham and cheese omelette, we've got one poached egg, full English breakfast. The scrambled egg and smoked salmon. Michelle, don't forget the cream. The pressure's on for Michelle to get her scrambled eggs to just the right consistency. It's a little bit runny. Go back to the stove for 30 seconds. Yes, chef. Dry it a little bit. We've got to get this right. You've just got to calm down a little bit. You're a little bit flustery. Yes, chef. Sorry, chef. No. What happened? Do it again. One, two, With Michelle's confidence three. floundering, chef takes drastic action. Michelle, come here. I don't think you're coping very well with the two egg dishes, so I'm going to take the eggs benedict off you. You're going to do the uh, eggs benedict, because I think you're coping very well. It's a blow for Michelle. But for Yola, it's a chance to prove she can cut it with the pros. OK, ready to plate these up. Let's go. Can I have those poached eggs, please, Yola, as well? Yes, Chef. At the moment, I'm juggling about three different orders at once, so it's a challenge, but I'm enjoying it. Good egg, Benedict. Good egg, Benedict. Thank well you. Done. And with service nearing an end, Sean also finds his feet and delivers his final breakfast, complete with perfectly cooked tomatoes. They're all nice and shiny. Everything's hot. Everything's very good. Thank you, sir. OK, guys, well, that's the end of the service. Thank Yoo you very much. God, I need a fag. It's been a hectic few hours, but for one, it's all been too much. I've really, really let myself down, and I'm hoping that uh, this isn't going to affect John and Greg's appraisal of me. Andre, we know that consistency is very, very important at breakfast. What about Michelle? How'd she get on? She didn't have a very good time. Oh, she wasn't confident in what she was doing. I had to take the eggs Benedict off her so we could keep our service going. So in the end, she just ended up doing scrambled eggs and smoked salmon? Pretty much, yeah. I really feel so unbelievably disappointed in myself. I just need to calm down and focus, because I cannot afford any more snow pops. What about Yola? How did she get on? When she first arrived, she seemed a little bit cocky in a way. But towards the end, she had three or four dishes coming on. She held the pressure very well. I don't think I got stressed because the, uh, the atmosphere around me was hot enough and I think you've got to stay cool in an environment like that. How did Sean get on today? Sean did very well. He asked the right questions. He made a few little mistakes, but he corrected them. It's always intimidating before you go into the kitchen. You know, you get nervous, you get butterflies in your stomach. But once you get going, the confidence helps you move forwards. If you were going to get one of our amateurs to come back and work in your kitchen again, who would it be? I would ask Yola back, because I think you can teach someone how to cook and the techniques and everything, but you need to have that natural passion inside you. Our three contestants are not even halfway through their gruelling day. Now they're on their way to a different restaurant for the next part of the endurance test. For our comeback contestants, this is the second and hardest part of their day. Now what they've got to do is summon up as much strength as possible, because it's inner service is about stamina. Eight hours in, and they arrive at the Oxo Tower, a fashionable restaurant on London's South Bank.
And with the restaurant fully booked, they'll have their work cut out to impress head chef Jeremy Bloor. OK, welcome to the Oxo Tower. Consistency, for me, is one of the main factors. There's no room for error, you know. The contestants now have just a couple of hours to design and prepare their own dishes, which they'll then cook for paying customers this evening. Their task tonight is to create a dish that sells, but not put themselves under too much pressure where they can't cope. Yola has designed a strategic venison dish with celeriac, apple and red cabbage salad on fried polenta. It requires plenty of preparation, but very little cooking. What does the dish say about you as a cook now? It says I can throw my hand at anything and hopefully make a good job of it. You did have a very good breakfast service this morning. What do you think you've got to do tonight to forge your way forward? Carry that success on through the evening service and take it all the way. I think she'll pull it off, but will she sell enough? That's the issue. Determined to make his mark tonight, Sean has chosen to make a complex lobster and tempura starter with beetroot, flying fish roe and a wasabi mayonnaise. There is a huge smile on your face. Yeah, man. What's happening? i got a beautiful, beautiful plate of food and I'm looking forward to a, a busy service. If this really sells, how are you going to cope with the numbers? There's going to be a lot of pressure. I've got to be nimble. I've got to use my hands quickly in order to get all this food out. If that dish sells, that guy, as tall as he is, is going to be up to his neck. After struggling at breakfast, Michelle has pulled out all the stops with a main course of monkfish and fennel salad with a fennel puree and cashew nuts. How prepared are you for the pressure of tonight? My confidence is to take a massive knock. But, you know, it's not uh, how much you fail, it's how you pick yourself up and get on with things. So that's what I'm going to do now. Well, I think you're absolutely right. That is a lovely dish, but the issue is, can she hold her nerve? Serious question mark now, hanging over that little lady. OK, guys, service is about to start. Good luck. 13 hours after they started work, the contestants must focus as the first diners arrive. Check on to asparagus, veal, fillet, sea bass, main course, Chateaubriand, monkfish. The first order goes to an anxious Michelle. Go on, then put your monkfish in there. Immediately, nerves get the better of her. Oh, sorry. It's been very, very steady. You don't want to throw it into the pan like that. Quickly now, in the oven. To get a little bit more of a flow. Take control of what you're doing, OK? Yes, Chef. She doesn't give me that much confidence, you know, which is a bit of a shame. She's got a big job tonight. I think my key is keep it focused, keep it together, and just follow orders. Check on four lobster, main course, two monkfish, two lamb. Sean's lobster is also an instant hit. But cooking tempura to order, then intricately dressing each dish takes time. OK, Sean, we're waiting on you now. You've got 20 seconds, let's go. There we go. OK, you need to clean that edge there, look. Just a little wipe, you know. If you drop anything on the edge, that doesn't mean you can drop everything all over the place. My main concern is probably presentation. Um, there are lots of little elements that have gone to, got to come together. Yola, on the other hand, is still waiting. I might be more busy, so, you know, standing around, you feel like a bit of a loose heart if you're not doing anything. Meanwhile, with her monkfish selling well, it's Michelle's chance to prove she has what it takes. That's two more monkfish on there, yeah? Yes, Chef. How long now, Michelle? You should be there, almost there, um, yeah? 30 seconds, Chef. With the pressure on, will she hold her nerve? Michelle? Coming up, Chef. Are you ready? Yes, Chef. Come on, then, let's have you. Fish up, Chef. Whee! Michelle? Yes, Chef. Great piece of monkfish. Thank you, Chef. Keep up the good work. Feels good to be receiving praise for a change, so. 15 hours into their shift, evening service is now in full flow. Check on, two venison main course, duck medium well. Uh, one minute. And Yola finally gets her first order. But after waiting for so long, 
she messes up the presentation. That one, you know, I'll tell you what, we need to get nice uniform on each side, I think. OK. Let me show you again. Use it as a nib of the pen and actually put it on the plate. OK. Yes, sir. Thank you. It doesn't take long for Yola to get it spot on. OK, that's what we're talking about. Is that all right, chef? Yeah, that is a lot better. It's even better than mine, that one. <laughs> Check on. Lobster, lobster, asparagus, salmon. Meanwhile, there's been no let-up in orders for Sean's lobster. Ah. Looks perfect, you know? All uniform. Good consistency. Well done. I want to be like the other guys in here. They can handle four or five dishes at once. And I think with a, with a bit of experience, I think I can do that. And with service nearly at an end, Michelle has finally conquered her nerves. I think I, I really have done pretty well. Yeah. It seems like chef's pretty Please. pleased with me. It's been a relentless day. Now it's up to Chef Jeremy to give his verdict. Sean tonight decided to do a real crowd please and lobster tempura and it looks fantastic. It looks the business. He's got a great touch and he, you know, he dresses he, he, every dish exactly the same. How do Yola get on? Unfortunately for Yola, she's never had sustained pressure. But, you know, she's doing it. She's doing great. Michelle had a difficult time in the kitchen this morning. How's she doing now? She scared me when I first saw her. I thought she was going to crumble on the first check, but she's actually pulled it out of the bag. If you were going to employ one of our guys, which one and why? It'd have to be Sean. He's cool, he's calm, he's collected. He looks as though he could do it day in, day out. It's early morning on day two, and the contestants arrive at MasterChef HQ for the final test. Yesterday was a roller coaster of emotions. If I win this, it would mean that I have challenged myself and I have come up on top. After a good experience in a professional kitchen, the only thing it can do for me is, you know, make me feel more confident and make me feel that I have the ability to produce great food. I feel really good about coming back again, the chance to fight another day. I just hope that I can pull it off. You have to cook absolutely superb food. That's what it's going to take to get you into a quarterfinal. Your two courses, one quarterfinal place. Let's cook. The contestants now have 60 minutes to prove they can deliver their best two courses. After a disastrous start in the breakfast service, Michelle pulled through last night. But has she got what it takes to make it to the quarter-final? You are back to the food that you truly love. Absolutely. Where I slipped up last year was when I tried to make food that did not represent me. I uh, stuck to my roots this time round. I'm going to make a fried banana bowli and uh, a really nice South Asian-inspired uh, lamb curry and lemon rice to go with it. What is a banana bowli? Uh, it's street food from Kerala. Fried banana uh, in a spicy batter. Michelle, you're back here. Yes. You must really want to do this. Oh, absolutely. Um, I don't want my little baby growing up thinking, oh, mummy didn't follow her dreams. <laughs> It's the food of her heritage, it's the food she grew up with. And because she loves it, because she knows it, I have no doubt it will be absolutely delicious. We are halfway. Half an hour left. Yesterday, Sean proved he had the stamina to excel in a professional kitchen. But now he needs to impress with his own food. To start with, we're doing calves liver with a sliced Bramley apple and a pear and thyme sauce. And then for our main course, we're doing rolled tilapia with parma ham, um, artichoke, asparagus and clams. My word! How good has your food got now, Sean? Deep down inside, I'm still about bold flavours, but I think my range of cooking has developed. You know, at the end of the day, you'll be able to tell me whether my food has improved. Good luck. It's complex, it's very, very unusual. If he pulls it off, you've got to say the guy is a very talented cook indeed. Guys, you've got 
got just 15 minutes left. Yola had a strong breakfast service yesterday morning, but her dish failed to sell in the evening. Can she get back on track today? Um, Yola, you've got uh, an interesting stock boiling away there. You've got some lovely ingredients. Uh, to start with, I've got roasted halibut on the bed of sautéed samphire with uh, shellfish sauce, oh. um, followed by chocolate orange marquise with Grand Marnier cream. Very nice. It's like a, a posh mousse. And uh, your dream now, Yola, is what? Fine dining in people's homes, so take my services to them so they have the total restaurant experience, but in the comfort of their own home. Ain't nothing wrong with the menu, which is whether Yola can actually pull it off. Five minutes. Five minutes. Seconds, finishing touches. That's it, time's up. For his starter, Sean has cooked calf's liver with Bramley apples and a sweet pear and thyme sauce. The sauce is really lovely and the apples are cooked really nicely. I do question the combination of apple, pear and liver. Yeah, I don't know how I feel about it, actually, Sean. <laughs> um, everything's cooked well. Mm -hmm. it, it, it's, it, it's not ghastly, but it's so unusual. I've never tasted anything like it before. Right. Sean's main course is baked tilapia in parma ham with artichokes, asparagus and clams in a white wine sauce. I've never seen artichoke and asparagus put together. You've got two very, very big daddy veggies there. Okay. And I don't think they blend. OK. I like the idea of the ham and the asparagus and the fish together. But there was a huge amount going on in my mouth just there. I think it's probably one ingredient too many. OK. Do you think you've done enough? I think the techniques and the skill is there. Maybe there's some, some learning to be done. Michelle hopes her banana bowly starter with banana flour and coconut chutney will help secure her a quarter-final place. You get this sweetness that comes from that coconut chutney and then you get whacked with that curry leaf in there. I... I bow to you. Never tasted anything like that before in my life and I would eat the whole lot, no worries at all. The beginning of the taste sensation is a little too sweet for me, but I love the heady spiciness and the heat that comes as an aftertaste. Will the judges be equally impressed with her lamb curry with lemon rice? That has huge things punching around all over your mouth. I love the rice, the smokiness of the fried curry leaves. For me, it's, it's very delicious. The meat's just a bit too dry. It's good food, it's tasty food, but I was expecting different notes and highs and lows from it that I got from the first one. So, in a way, I'm slightly disappointed with it. Michelle, have you done enough over the last two days to stop I, you in the place? I hope so. You know, you saw me really, really down, and then you saw me pick myself up off that floor, go out there and do my very best. Yola has made roasted halibut with crevettes and clams served on a bed of sautéed samphire with a shellfish sauce. The opening burst of flavour is nothing short of magnificent. I've got to say, um, you're so close to perfection there, but there's not enough power in that sauce and it falls away. Mm. Wow. That is like a big taste of the sea. I love the prawns with it. I love the clams with it. It's just that sauce at the last minute that just doesn't hold up. Can Yola go one better with her chocolate marquise with Grand Marnier cream? Oh. Oh, 
rich, soft chocolate, and then a sharp citrus orange finish at the end. It's absolutely delightful. Thank you. Beautifully soft, perfectly cooked, with a good whack of heat from the alcohol. It's, for me, a very, very good dessert. I like it a lot. Thank you. You know the rules. One of you is staying, and we're going to send two of you home. Off you go. Really nice day. Good people, terrific food. I would like to start with Sean. Sean today cooked us liver with apples and a pear sauce. I couldn't understand whether I liked it or not. If I get to that stage of indecisive, that means I'm never going to order it. I know the guy had a very good time in the professional kitchen yesterday. But I'm beginning to question the fella's palate. Never, if you cooked from now until the end of time, would you find an ingredient that will sit happily with asparagus one side and a globe artichoke the other? And it was just all a bit, I think you put it right, confused. All right, Sean's out of the judging. It's now Michelle and Yola. I loved Michelle's banana bowly. That was one of the tastiest things I've eaten in a very, very long time. Her lamb curry, of course, it's very hard to make a lamb curry look pretty, but she's doing it. I think it's very, very different food, and I think it's, uh, it, it, it excites me. But I do worry that uh, Michelle won't have the stamina. She was able to get herself back into gear after the disaster of, of yesterday morning. I doubted that she would be able to do it because she was, I mean, almost completely out the door. Things went wrong. I picked myself right back up, got back into the groove and proved that I could really, really cook. I think uh, Yola has, has moved on leaps and bounds from when we last saw her. The fish was cooked perfectly, the clams were beautiful, but her sauce was a bit watery. The flavours wowed me at the start. It did tail away uh, a little. But that little chocolate marquise was nothing short of spectacular. John, it was absolutely faultless cooking. I wanted to prove a point to them today that I can produce good food and that they did chuck the wrong person out last time. Look, they are both good, but I think one is a little bit more exciting. Our winner... It's Michelle. Amazing. I was cooking before this and I'll be cooking after this. There's no reason why I should stop. I haven't really got any regrets about any of it, really. It's been an experience and uh, I'm looking forward to going home and having a nice cup of tea. I, I just... I just cannot believe it. I, I thought I'd blown it completely yesterday morning. I know the mistakes I made in the last quarter-final, and I know that this time round, I am not going to make the same mistakes again. I got through to the quarter-finals. Well, well done, Michelle. <laughs> <laughs> Michelle's place is secure for now, but in the morning, she'll be back for the next daunting stage. It's 8 a.m. on quarter-final day, and the four comeback heat winners have returned to fight for the last coveted place in the semi-finals. These guys know what it takes to advance in this competition, and we have had a level of food that I never, ever expected. They've worked really hard this week, and we are going to have a tough, tough competition today. I think I can win the competition. I wouldn't be sitting here otherwise. I think I can win. I am good at what I do. I want to cook professionally, and this is the perfect springboard into that. I've upped my game for the quarterfinals, and I think I can make it all the way. We have got ourselves four really brilliant cooks. The winner of this quarterfinal is actually a contender for the winner of the title itself. First up, it's 26-year-old Andy. In his heat, he blew the judges away with food inspired by his travels. Mate, that is, uh, that is cooking of the first order. Thank you. Oh. 
But in the morning restaurant service, he struggled to consistently poach his eggs. You have to do these eggs again. You've got the easiest section out of the three. You should be giving me perfect eggs every time. If there is one cook in this competition who has worked hard for the last 12 months, it is Andy. That pigeon ravioli is some of the best food I have ever, ever seen on MasterChef. There is one thing for me that Andy has to do today, and that is cook consistently as well as he did to get into this heat. I'm more determined than ever. I know now, absolutely 100% certain, that this is the direction I want to take my life in. In her heat, mother of three Rachel excelled in the pro kitchen and then impressed with her classic dish of poached lamb with pea puree and boulanger potatoes. It looks elegant. Very, very delicious. Thank you. But she failed to get the balance of flavours right with her dessert. The taste of that raspberry coulis is shocking. <laughs> All it's doing is stopping me getting at a beautifully made chocolate and nut cake. I love the cook that Rachel has become in the last 12 months. She now understands that food foremost is about flavour. It's fantastic, it's exciting, but what she's got to do now is take it out of her home and think about it being served in a restaurant. Make it that little bit finer. I have been given an opportunity to do something in life that I really want to do. Construction manager Simon dreams of owning his own bistro. His ambitious dish of lamb in a white onion sauce sold out in the restaurant. There is no more lamb after this one. You're out of the frame, yeah? But he sometimes struggles to balance his flavours. That sauce is seriously powerful. I can't even taste the horseradish in that mashed potato. Simon seriously loves to cook, and he will work and work and work till he drops. Simon is creating his own style of cookery. He understands process. He's technically able. All he's got to do is pare back the flavours just that little bit. I'm certainly not lacking in drive and enthusiasm. Yeah, I think I've got what it takes. Finally, it's new mum Michelle. In her heat, she wowed the judges with the complex Indian flavours of her heritage. I doubt you. But in the morning restaurant service, she fell apart under the pressure and the chef had to take drastic action. I don't think you're coping very well with the two egg dishes, so I'm going to take the eggs benedict off you. Michelle has a skill that very few cooks have, and that is the ability to be able to spice food. That banana bowl was one of the most wonderful things I've ever, ever eaten. I can't wait to see what she comes up with next. There has to be a question mark, though, over her ability to soak up pressure. I know I can go on and do a lot better than I did last time now, and I just am so desperate for the chance to prove myself. This is our last semi-final place. For one of these guys to prove themselves the best, they are going to have to cook like an angel. It's 10 o'clock, and the contestants are back at MasterChef HQ. They're about to be tested on their food knowledge and commitment. After this, one of them will be sent home. Ingredients recognition, and for our four quarterfinals, is very, very important, because if they cook a lot, they should know lots and lots of different ingredients. Today, I have five fish. General rule is the brighter the fish, the warmer the water, the browner the fish, the colder the water. I've got a tray of my favourite veg that grows underground. For hundreds of years, nobody trusted food that grew underground. It's quite a modern phenomenon. This majestic flatfish is the great Dover sole. Probably one of the most expensive fish these days. Classically served with brown butter and served on the bone. Really, really delicious. What's that? That's a Dover sole. I think that is a soul. I think it's a Dover soul. Dover soul? That is a place. Rachel isn't off to a good start in the ingredient recognition test. Will she be able to convince John and Greg that she has the drive to be a MasterChef semi finalist? It's so unfair that somebody has to go out before they cook this afternoon. And so it's up to me to make them understand how much I want this. MasterChef last year was fantastic but I was gutted with myself for going out. Um, this time, it's like somebody has put a flame underneath me. I am so determined and so passionate. It's like winning, winning the lottery. It's like, here you go. 
now, Rachel, you do it. You go and you take it and you, you do whatever you can with it. And I'm just right up there and I just want this so badly. Thank you. Go on. I have here a celeriac. Closely related to the celery, this you can chip, this you can mash, makes fantastic crisps. What's that? Celeriac. Celeriac, that one. I think this is a celeriac. It's a celeriac. Construction manager Simon is doing well so far. He now needs to persuade John and Greg that he's ready to swap his old job for a new career in food. Uh, it will crucify me if I go out without having to cook. I cook from the heart and I'm enthusiastic and passionate about everything that I do. Um, hopefully that will come across. Well, it's great to be back. I, I went out earlier than I anticipated last time. I don't want to make that mistake this year. I go to sleep thinking about food. I wake in the night, I've got a little sketchbook and sketch out a little dish that I do. I wake up, I woke up Sunday and started cooking at half past six and gave, gave the missus a breakfast, you know. My ultimate goal is to have my own bistro. Thank you very much. This one here is a sea bass, but quite a small sea bass. It steams well as well as bakes well. A bit of soy sauce, some spray onion, some ginger, absolutely delicious. Do you know what that is? Sea bass. That's a, um, a sea bass? Sea bass. A sea bass. Andy has correctly recognised all the ingredients so far. Can he now show that his passion matches his knowledge? It feels great to be back again, but the most important thing is being able, having an opportunity to cook today, and until that happens, I'm not going to be not going to be satisfied. I absolutely love cooking, you know that. And what I want to do is produce perfect food for paying customers. That's what I want to do, end of story. I'm massively determined, I'm massively enthusiastic about this. I'm willing to make sacrifices. I don't care about, you know, working all hours, getting up and I want to cook 24 seven. Please give me a chance to cook today and I will not disappoint you. Thanks very much, Andy. Cheers, Andy. This is a yam. You can tell the difference between the yam and the sweet potato by the roughness of the yam skin. A sweet potato has a much smoother skin. What's that? A yam? I think that's another variety of sweet potato. A yam? I'm going with sweet. New mum Michelle has failed to identify the yam. Will she now demonstrate she has what it takes to get to the semi-final this year? I would be bitterly disappointed if I had to go home this afternoon because it just means so much to me. I believe I have a natural flair for cooking. Now, this is not something you can learn. It has to be there in you. My culture is all about food. I love the smells of spices roasting, the colours of them spread out to dry out in the sun. MasterChef, for me, is about all this. It's about who I am. It's about what I want to be in the future. Please give me the opportunity to show to you how much this means to me. Thank you very much. This is actually quite incredible because these four did very, very well in the ingredients recognition test, all of them. And all four of them have sat on that sofa, been very, very passionate, very articulate about what they want to do. We have got a seriously, seriously tough job here. There's definitely one cook who has, for the last 12 months, made it their absolute ambition to get back on this programme and cook very well. And Andy has been practising and honing his skills and understanding different cuisines. That guy has to cook today. It would be an absolute travesty to not have that young man cooking today. Good. I don't think we've seen the best of Rachel yet. Rachel, to me, delivered a very, very passionate speech. You know, we know the girl is driven and wants to be able to cook today. She's a very good cook. She's a very elegant cook. I like her food. So if we agree, then, that means that Andy and Rachel are in. Our discussion now is between Michelle and Simon. Michelle's nerves worry me. I can't disagree with you. I totally agree with you about her nerves. But for me, Michelle's food has a definition. It is of her heritage, she understands how it works, and she has a style. Simon is still, in my mind, trying to find his style. Technically, he's very, very proficient. His issue has to be flavouring of food. You, you've got reservations about uh, the flavours that, that Simon employs, but the guy is so passionate. 
John, Simon's got to stay. There is no doubting at all that this has to be our toughest decision ever. Simon or Michelle? I... We have to send one of you home. But we have made our decision. The contestant leaving us now is Simon. Absolutely gutted. Not to get the cook this afternoon is, uh, is mind-blowingly uh, disappointing, really. This isn't going to stop me cooking, because it's what I love to do. And I still fulfil my dream, and it just may take a little longer. Congratulations. You three can breathe a big sigh of relief. There is a semi-finalist amongst you. Let's cook. The three remaining contestants now have an hour and 20 minutes to produce a three-course meal that they've designed themselves. So far in the competition, 26-year-old Andy has demonstrated an ability to create flavoursome dishes inspired from his travels. What are you doing today? I'm doing a sort of a North African theme menu. I'm starting out with a, a quail salad, then I'm going to do a seafood tagine. And I'm going to finish it with um, cardamom and rosewater rice pudding with a poached pear. What are you hoping now to prove to us? Today, I hope to prove to you that I can do big flavours, really rustic but delicious food, but presented in a modern fashion. Do you now see yourself, Andy, lifting that trophy at the end of the competition? I wouldn't be here if I didn't want to win it, and I didn't think I had a chance, and I absolutely think both of those things. Good luck, Andy. Main course, seafood tagine. I just can't see it, how it's going to be beautiful. You're halfway. Mother of three, Rachel, has impressed with her British classics. She now needs to show refinement with her three courses. What are you going to cook for us today? Today we're having a shellfish tian. Then we're having pork with parsnip and potato puree with caramelised apples and followed by rhubarb and orange cake. What are you showing us with this menu? It's just food that I love. Food that I, well, but I've gone up more than food that I love. It's not just home food. This is uh, shellfish tian. I expect you to see it in nice restaurants. So you're kind of seeing a little bit of me, but also trying to up the game. Pork, parsnips and caramelised apple. Very, very classic. And then she's going slightly left field with her cake of orange and rhubarb. You have 25 minutes left. Michelle has displayed her mastery of Indian spices, but can she hold her nerve cooking spicy fish cakes, a pork curry with rice bread and a sweet carrot halva? And what do you think we're looking for in you? You are looking for me to be myself. And this time round, to have stuck to what I do best, which is beautifully spiced food that is very, very tasty. How difficult is all this coming together at the last minute? It's going to be quite stressful because two of my dishes have to be finished at the last minute, so I am uh, slightly uh, under pressure. I've seen the spices on that table and I can't wait. Two minutes! seconds. Do it now. That's it. Stop. Andy's Moroccan-inspired menu begins with a spiced quail salad with pomegranate and pistachios. 
Flavour is very, very rich, very, very spiced. You get the taste of those crispy onions, you get the sweetness and the sharpness of that pomegranate, and you still survive with that quail. I think it's lovely. Thank you. It's, uh, it's a wonderful looking dish, a really terrific looking dish. No, that's fantastic. I got lemon, and then the meatiness of the quail, then little bursts of fruit as the pomegranate was going. I've got pepper and spice in my mouth now. That's very clever. Thank you. Will his seafood tagine with flatbread be as big a success? At first, you get the really powerful flavours of the saffron and the olives. And it's not until you get that wonderful saltiness of that prawn that suddenly your mouth comes alive and you realise that you've got seafood in there. And that's when you start to taste the fish. I think it's beautifully cooked. I think it looks absolutely fantastic. I think it's well seasoned. I like the saffron. I like the way it goes a little bit fruity, afterwards a little bit sweet. It doesn't have the complexity of flavour and the deepness of flavour is your first course. Finally, can his spiced poached pear with cardamom cream and rosewater rice pudding win the judges over? The rice pudding is delicious. The pear is just not quite the centrepiece that it's saying it is right now on the plate. But, um, nice dessert. That is simplistic beauty, as far as I'm concerned. That looks lovely. You get that rose water, it's just absolutely lovely. Then you're picking up vanilla and sweetness. The pear is not chucking out a lot of honey. I think that's a good dessert. I don't think it's a spectacular dessert. Do you think these three plates of food are enough to get you through to the next round? Yeah, I hope so. I'm, I listen to everything you say and I'm going to learn from every dish I do and I'm going to get better each time. Michelle has cooked a starter of spicy fish cakes with mint and yoghurt chutney. You get a little bit of heat, but not too much. You get sourness in there, you get the saltiness that comes with the fish and all the spice background. They're great. I get mint. I think, right, I know that. This is mint. In comes a real whack of salt. Then we start to get the sweetness of the fish cake. Then in comes chilli over the top. Lovely. Thank you. Her main course is pork curry with rice bread and an okra and yoghurt sauce. That pork in there is smoky from the curry leaf. It's got this background of, of chilli spice. Then we've got this wonderful sweetness of okra and sourness of the yoghurt, and it is fantastic to your palate. I just think it's stunning. Thank you. Thank you. Lime, heat, cardamom, coriander, yoghurt to calm it all down. There's a lot going on. Finally, can Michelle's carrot halva with cardamom-infused cream secure her a place in the semi-final? At first, it's that very sweet, almost over-caramelised sugar with that um, carrot. Then the saffron, and then a tiny touch of cardamom. I love the idea of it. The Western palate? I'm not quite sure. That is toasty, nutty, sweet and spiced all at once. That is incredible. Thank you. Are you going to get through? I hope so. When I've shown you a different world of food. For her starter, Rachel has cooked a shellfish and avocado tian with pita chips. Rachel's a whacking great portion. Yeah. I mean, that's, that is a sort of, you know, man-sized meal. There is a time to be dainty. Flavours I love. I love that fresh crab not mucked around with and then the lovely um, brown shrimps, avocado, tomato. It's delicious. It just needs to look that bit prettier. Yeah. That works. 
Good. Uh, sweetness of the crab and saltiness of prawn. I think that tastes fantastic. Thank you. Can she continue to win praise with her pork tenderloin on parsnip mash with caramelised apples and watercress salad? What I get is that almost cider sweetness of that apple against the soft pork. I want a little bit more than that. It's very, very pleasant, but a competition, I think we need a little bit more than that. Okay. It is really beautifully soft, well-cooked pork, and delicious as it is. The apples there are really sweet, and every so often you get a touch of that parsnip, that sort of lovely woodiness, but not enough. For me, it needs something like mustard sauce, just some acidity and some real power to make it more unctuous. Will her rhubarb and orange cake with clotted cream fare any better? Wholly and completely delicious. <laughs> you, you feel how light it is when you lift it up and it's beautifully moist. It's lovely. It's delicious. Rich orange sponge, almost like a tea cake in texture where it's sort of Crunchy on top, but soft in the centre. The rhubarb juice is just coming through. Well balanced. Really, really delicious. I look at your three plates, and there is one thing you need to do, Rachel. You need to make it look sexy. I totally agree. I just thought I was being a bit mean, giving a smaller one. Have you done enough on these three plates to secure your place? I think, yes, I have. Thanks very much. Thanks, Rachel. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. It is not going to be an easy decision. Off you go. Well, as, as a comeback week goes, we knew we were going to get a high standard of food, but not like we got today. Quite extraordinary. I think we've been treated today. Uh, I've got to say, Rachel has found herself in the company of two truly gifted people. As great as Rachel's food is, that, that lovely mix of crab and avocado and shrimp and tomato, it didn't have the wow. The pudding, apple, rhubarb, really, really delicious, but again, not the wow. If I go out now, I will be devastated, I have to say. I'll be very upset. I, I love Rachel's food. It's, it's hearty and it's bursting full of flavour. It's just these two are just incredible. So, sh shall we agree that Rachel goes home and now we discuss uh, Andy and Michelle? I have no idea how we separate Andy and uh, Michelle because they are so completely and utterly different. I'll talk about Andy's food as I see it. That uh, quail, pomegranate, couscous, that was just lovely. I mean, wow. Subtle, beautiful, elegant, and I loved his main course. I thought it was very, very well done. It needed that prawn to make you realise you're eating fish, and then it started to come alive in your mouth. <sighs> the guy is a talent. I didn't come here to get good comments and then go home. I came here to get through, so I won't be happy with anything less. But, actually, I think I prefer Michelle's food. Everything is spiced so elegantly. It is extraordinary in flavour. Those little fish cakes, really heady with lots of spices. That dessert, I, I've, I've never... It's honey, it's nut, it's toasty, it's spicy, it's sweet. I mean, it's just wonderful. If I make it through the stage, then I'll have, it. I'll have taken a giant step towards winning MasterChef. We are looking for our last semi-finalist. It's a difficult decision. I have to reflect upon what Andy's done so far, every so often you see a star. Look, I, I, I grant you, there aren't many cooks come along like Andy, but I don't think there are any that come along like Michelle. You guys are seriously talented. You know the rules, we've only got one semi-final place. The person going through to the next round 
is Andy. Congratulations. Well done. Well done. I'm disappointed. I'm extremely, extremely proud of myself. I didn't go out um, quietly, did I? I went out kicking and screaming. I'm just sad that I'm not going to go through to the next phase of MasterChef. I've loved every moment of it, but it's just not to be, and um, I'll do something, though. And he's made it through the semi-finals. He is going to be bursting with confidence. He's coming here to win this competition, and that is brilliant. Hi. Um, I'm in the semi-final. <laughs> <laughs> the semi-finals is where it's all where it's at, where it all starts happening and, and I'm so thrilled to be there. Congratulations, semi finalist. Well done. I'm, I'm absolutely over the moon. Well done. I'm gonna absolutely give it everything I've got. Andy will be back next time with the five other heat winners for the first semi final. 132 contestants have walked through the MasterChef doors. Six weeks of heat and here we are with six extraordinary cooks. Six people who have proven themselves to be a cut above the rest. A good cook, you get through round one. Great cook, you might get to round two. You have to be absolutely exceptional to be here tonight. They now have the chance to experience the most challenging and exciting food adventure of their lives. But their places are not yet secure, because next time, two of them will be going home. Who stays? But more importantly, who goes? <laughs>